So we're picking up from where we left off on in the last lecture, and we're going to start this one off with the ligaments. So there's five ligaments that we have to keep track of. There's the collateral ligament, also known as the discal ligament. There's the capsular ligament, the TM, also known as the temporomandibular ligament, and then the sphenomandibular ligament and the stylomandibular ligament. So we're going to organize these five ligaments into two groups. The first group is in a group of three, which are functionally going to support the TMJ. They're directly right around the TMJ. And then there's two accessory ligaments, which are further away from the TMJ, and they just support the TMJ. They don't directly affect it. And these two are kind of nice because they tell you exactly what they connect to. So for example, the stylomandibular ligament connects to the styloid process and the mandible. And then the sphenomandibular ligament connects to the spine of the sphenoid and right to the mandible. So for the beginning of this lecture, we're going to be focusing on just these three functional ligaments. And then at the end, we'll take a look at these two accessory ligaments. So the types of questions you'll see on, on a very general level are going to be asking you about which ligaments are accessory ligaments and which ligaments are going to be supporting the TMJ directly. So which of the following ligaments is an accessory ligament? Choose all that apply. And remember, the accessory ligaments are pretty easy to pick out because their name tells you exactly what they're connected to. And so that's going to be the stylomandibular and the sphenomandibular ligament. So the first one we're going to look at is the collateral or discal ligament. So first, right off the bat, notice there's two names for it. So it can be called the collateral ligament. Sometimes it's called the discal ligament. And this disc comes in two flavors. So there's the medial discal ligament and the lateral discal ligament. And so right here I have a picture of the condyle. And then this blue football is supposed to represent the articular disc. And then these lines right here are the medial discal ligament and the lateral discal ligaments. And the job of these ligaments is to connect the disc right to the condyle and hold it on tight, not let it move around and displace itself. And so the origin is going to be pretty easy. It just connects from the condyle and then inserts right into the disc. And these fibers are made from collagenous connective tissue. And we don't want them to stretch. We want them to be stable. And the, their job is just to hold that disc right over the condyle and not let it move. And so their job is really just to restrict the movement of the disc away from the condyle. And so when these collateral ligaments tear, it's going to cause something called disc displacement. I prefer to call these discal ligaments because that kind of tells you a little bit more about what they're going to do. They're really going to connect to the disc. They're going to prevent movement of the disc. And they're in general just going to keep that disc just solid right above the condyle. So we've got two different terms here. We've got disc displacement. And then earlier we learned about dislocation. So remember dislocation is when the disc goes too far forward and gets stuck in front of that articular eminence. And now disc displacement can occur in any direction. So take your fingers and almost act like you're grabbing this blue football, this disc, and then pretend like you're just moving it around, you know, move it up to the top left of the screen, move it to the top right, move it straight up, straight down. You know, that's displacement is when you move that disc in any three dimensions. And these discal ligaments prevent you from doing that. Now, which direction do you think is the most common uh, direction for disc displacement to occur. Now, if you remember, this disc is divided into three sections, the posterior, the intermediate zone, and the anterior zone. And that anterior zone is connected to the superior fibers of the lateral pterygoid muscle. So that's going to pull it down, down to the bottom right corner, down to the bottom left corner of the screen. And so it's most often going to be moving in that anterior direction. And so the discal ligaments actually do quite a lot to help prevent that lateral pterygoid from displacing the disc anteriorly. Let's look over some questions for the collateral or discal ligament. What's another name for the collateral ligaments? And remember, those are going to be the discal ligaments. And there's two flavors. There's the medial and the lateral. Where do the collateral ligaments run? Remember, they're going to connect at those lateral and medial poles of both the disc and the condyle. What is the function of the discal ligaments? And remember, that's to resist movement of the disc. And another way you can say that is that it prevents dislocation of the disc. What are the collateral ligaments made from? And that's going to be collagenous connective tissue. 
and what occurs during disc displacement of the TMJ. And in that situation, you're gonna have the collateral ligaments become elongated or torn, and so they're no longer doing their job of protecting that disc from moving. And so oftentimes it allows that lateral pterygoid muscle to pull the articular disc out of place. The next ligament we're gonna be talking about is the capsular ligament. And you'll notice a trend here as we talk about these ligaments, we're gonna start really, really close to the disc, close to the TMJ, and we're gonna get further away. And so the capsular ligament is gonna cover and encompass the entire TMJ. So if you look right here at this picture, you can see that this capsular ligament just covers the entire TMJ right here, the condyle and the disc. When you look at it from the lateral view, you'll see that the origin is on the temporal bone which is just above where all the action is happening on the mandibular fossa and the articular eminence. And then it inserts on the neck of the condyle. The capsular ligament has a couple jobs. It's gonna resist any forces medially, laterally, and inferiorly that could dislocate the articular disc from its articular surfaces. So the capsular ligament encapsulates everything. It just keeps everything nice and tight. It's like a big thing of duct tape that's holding onto the neck of the condyle attaching all the way up to the temporal bone and just making sure that nothing is slipping, the condyle's not slipping, the disc isn't slipping. It also makes sure that there's no leakage of synovial fluid and it helps provide some proprioception. And just as a reminder, the retrodiscal tissue also provides some proprioception. So sometimes you'll see the capsular ligament tested on which layer is thick, which layer is firm, which layer is loose, and why are they thick, firm, and loose. So we'll start with the thick layer. So this is a very important concept to remember here. So the thick layer of the capsular ligament is actually the next ligament that we're gonna be talking about in the next slide. The thick layer is also known as the temporomandibular ligament. So this is the outermost layer of the fibrous capsule. So when you take your finger and put it just in front of your ear and blow your temple and open your mouth a little bit and find that joint, and then you push on that a little bit, you're touching the TM ligament. That's the outermost part of the capsular ligament. So the temporal mandibular ligament is that thickened lateral part of the capsular ligament. And then we have a firm layer. And the firm layer is medially and laterally to stabilize the joint. And the loose layer is anterior and posterior to allow for mandibular movements. So if you just grab onto your jaw and do some lateral excursive movements, you don't really want the jaw to be wobbling super far to the left and to the right. And so medially and laterally, you want the joint to be pretty firm. But those border movements that are moving anterior and posterior, you know, you're talking, you're eating, you wanna have a little bit more give with those movements. And so you want that layer of the capsular ligament to be a little bit more loose. So this is a table that just kind of summarizes what we've talked about so far. That collateral or discal ligament is literally connected right to the disc. It's connecting the disc to the condyle, and it's gonna help restrict movement of that disc away from the condyle. The origin and insertion are pretty easy because it's you know literally attached from the medial pole and lateral pole of the condyle, and then just jumps right over to the medial and lateral pole of the disc. The job of the capsular ligament is to resist any forces medially and laterally and inferiorly that dislocate the articular disc, from the articular surfaces. So pretty close here, pretty close in function, but the collateral ligament is gonna prevent the disc from pulling away from the condyle. The capsular ligament is gonna prevent the disc from pulling away from the articular surface. So one prevents the disc from pulling away below, the condyle's below the disc, and one prevents the disc from pulling away from above, which is the articular surfaces. It's gonna help contain the synovial fluid and prevent leaks, and it's gonna provide some proprioception. The origin is gonna be on the temporal bone just above the articular fossa and the articular eminence, and then it's gonna insert on the neck of the condyle. So let's get into some questions on the capsular ligament. What structure of the TMJ secretes and then encapsulates the fluid that lubricates the TMJ? And that's gonna basically be the fibrous capsule. So they may throw some fancy stuff in there like compartments and stuff like that, but we're looking for the fibrous capsule. And if they don't have the fibrous capsule in there, then we're looking for either the upper or lower synovial cavity. What is the thicker layer of fibrous tissue which is reinforced by accessory ligaments? And they don't have to just outright say the temporomandibular ligament. They could be more vague about it. They could say something like the outer fibrous layer of the fibrous capsule. 
The fibrous capsule of the TMJ is fairly thin everywhere except where? And that would be laterally where it forms the temporomandibular ligament. The fibrous capsule is fairly thin except laterally where it forms the lateral temporomandibular ligament. Also, just keep in mind that the joint is pretty firm medially and laterally to stabilize those side to side movements. And that's another question on its own. So where's the fibrous capsule of the TMJ firm and why? And it would be firm in a medial and lateral position. And that would be to stabilize the mandible during those side to side excursive movements. And where's the fibrous capsule of the TMJ loose? And that would be anterior and posterior, which allows a little more flexibility to talk and eat during those mandibular movements. And then what is the purpose of the capsular ligament? Sometimes you'll see it as the joint capsule. And it's going to prevent excessive displacement of the mandible. It's going to prevent that synovial fluid from leaking out and provide some proprioception, just like the retrodiscal tissue. All right, so we're going to talk about our third ligament now, the temporomandibular ligament. And as you saw in the previous lecture, that joint capsule and the temporomandibular ligament kind of go hand in hand. They're, they're connected. So it should make some sense that the TM ligament is also known as the lateral ligament. That's because it's the lateral most part of that capsular ligament. It can be palpated, like I talked about, with finger pressure on the lateral pole of the condyle. So when you put your finger there, you're touching the TM ligament first. And then if you go a little bit deeper, you're going to get to the capsular ligament. There's an oblique and a horizontal portion. Don't let that confuse you. Um, you know, when they ask you questions, I would just mostly look for that base name of the temporomandibular ligament. Okay, now if you look at this picture, the origin is going to be on the articular eminence. So here's the condyle inserting into the mandibular fossa, and just in front of it is the articular eminence. So the origin is going to be the articular eminence and the zygomatic process, and it inserts right on the condyle, right on that neck of the condyle. Its job is to prevent excessive dropping of the condyle, so it's connected right there to the condyle, so the condyle can't drop out of its socket. It's going to prevent excessive posterior movement or retrusion. If you look at the way this is positioned, it's like a big thick rubber band. It's not going to allow that condyle to push too far back into the retrodiscal tissue. It's going to protect the retrodiscal tissue from getting squished by the condyle. It's so strong that it, the neck of the condyle will break before this condyle will push back into the retrodiscal tissue. So the way I remember this is I think if the condyle retrudes and squishes your retrodiscal tissue, you'll be a bad tempered man. And so tempered man, a capitalized temp and man to remind you of temporomandibular ligament. So here's a table. You can go ahead and pause it if you want to review this. I'm going to skip right on to the next slide. Where does the temporal mandibular ligament run? And they could say from the articular eminence to the mandibular condyle or the zygomatic process to the mandibular condyle. What are the functions of the TM ligament? It provides lateral reinforcement. It prevents posterior and inferior displacement of the condyle. It also protects the retrodiscal tissue from getting smushed. What is another name for the TM ligament? and that's gonna be the lateral ligament. When there's a fracture of the neck of the condyle, why does the head of the condyle remain in the mandibular fossa? And that's because of how strong that TM ligament is. It's like a very thick rubber band, and it's just gonna hold that condyle up in the mandibular fossa, even if the neck of the condyle is broken. We're gonna switch gears now from the main ligaments to the accessory ligaments, and you'll notice a theme with those main ligaments. We start super close to the disc with the discal ligament, we zoom out a little further to the capsular ligament, and then we zoom out even further laterally to that TM ligament. There's really not a lot to study with these accessory ligaments. They're really not tested on too much, mostly the origin insertion, and then like one or two little facts about them. So we're going to start with the sphenomandibular ligament. So that's this one right here. The origin is going to be the spine of the sphenoid, and it's going to insert on the lingula. And you'll notice that this is right next to the mandibular canal where we do our uh, IAN block. So this is going to be the most damaged ligament during an inferior alveolar nerve block. And then the stylomandibular ligament is going to originate on the styloid process, and it's going to insert on the angle of the ramus. And its job is to prevent the mandible from protruding too far. 
So this is like a rubber band connected to the back of the mandible to prevent it from protruding too far forward. All right, so we've got my old pal Piccolo here acting as a stylo mandibular ligament. And we've got excessive protrusion, like class three protrusion. And that stylo mandibular ligament is preventing that excessive protrusion from pushing your jaw forward. If you've ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, then you know one of the most popular and famous characters in there is Bubba Gump. And he's got this crazy class three occlusion. And so his stylo mandibular ligament is not really working that well. And so he's got this excessive protrusion. So here's a quick summary of the jobs of the ligament. So the discal ligament is gonna keep that disc close to the condyle. The capsular ligament is gonna keep that disc close to the articular surfaces. And if you watched the previous lecture, now at this point you are really well familiar with what the articular surface is, the layers, the exception with the TMJ and all that good stuff. The TM ligament, remembering that if the condyle retrudes and squishes your retrodiscal tissue, you will be a bad tempered man. And then to remember what the stylo mandibular ligament does, we're gonna think that it's trying to make you a stylish man, unlike Bubba from Forrest Gump. So let's get into some questions here. Uh, name the accessory ligaments. It's gonna be the sphenomandibular ligament and the stylo mandibular ligament. The function is to limit excessive opening and protrusion. Where does the sphenomandibular ligament insert? And remember that's the lingula of the mandible and it originates in the spine of the sphenoid. What ligament is damaged the most during an IAN block? And that's gonna be the sphenomandibular ligament. Where does the stylomandibular ligament insert? And that's gonna be the angle of the mandible. And where does it originate? That's gonna be the styloid process. So let's do a quick review on the origin and insertion. So when we start at the collateral or discal ligament, it's gonna originate on the articular disc and it's gonna insert on the medial and lateral poles of the condyle. And the capsular ligament, remember it spreads across the temporal bone and it's gonna be on the articular fossa and the articular eminence. And it's gonna insert down on the neck of the condyle. The TM ligament, its origin is just a little bit further anterior than the capsular ligament. There's some overlap with the articular eminence, but it moves a little further forward to get onto the zygomatic process. And then it inserts on the neck of the condyle. The stylomandibular ligament is gonna originate on the styloid process and insert on the angle of the ramus. And then the sphenomandibular ligament is gonna originate on the spine of the sphenoid and insert on the lingula of the mandible. All right, so we're done with the ligaments. Man, I feel like that's a big deal. That's confusing stuff and so it's good to get through that have it organized and understandable so make sure you understand the origin and insertion of those and those facts that i went through about them and you'll be in good shape when you're tested on the ligaments so next lecture we're going to focus on the muscles of mastication